Hey, everybody. I am here with Rhett Louder, back-to-back ACC Pitcher of the Year. That's sick. And ace for the number one Wake Forest Demon Deacons. What is up, Rhett? Hey, how are you? Thanks for I'm, having me. I'm doing great. Is that a good intro or what? Like, isn't that, have yeah. you, did you ever dream about being a back to back ACC pitcher of the year? I mean, that's pretty cool. In high school, I was just trying to, uh, I was begging to get an offer from a, from an ACC school. So it's pretty cool to come in here and, and do that. So like growing up in North Carolina, you, you obviously were a UNC fan, right? I went to UNC. I'm just giving you crap. I actually was a UNC fan growing up. Seriously? My, my brother went to UNC. Yeah. I don't Very know. Cool. I guess I can say that now. It's fine. <laughs> Did you like, like, to me, it's one of my, I mean, obviously I I'm a, I'm a fan of all the North Carolina schools. Um, mm -hmm. but like going to Chapel Hill, it was fantastic. Like there's not a better place. I'm a yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that now. <laughs> yeah. My, my, my son actually played baseball at Georgia tech. So another team, similar colors. Yeah. Y'all were a bit better this year though. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so like, let's start, let's talk about development because you weren't necessarily, you just mentioned it. You weren't necessarily a highly recruited guy. You were trying to latch on to an ACC program. Um, like what clicked with you? How did you make the jump from a guy that's hoping to go to an ACC school to a guy that is the best pitcher in the ACC and one of the best pitchers in the country without a doubt? Yeah. I mean, it's been a journey for sure. Um, in high school, I mean, I kind of, I kind of like just got out, but I was like a skinny kid, just a tall, skinny kid that did not throw very hard at all. Um, I threw like 84 um, on a good day in high school before I like committed. So um, I kind of just relied on learning how to pitch and then pitching backwards from, from a pretty young age. And, um, and then when I got to campus, I, I was still like a step behind from a lot of the guys my freshman year. Uh, but I, I put on that weight. I, I got, I gained like 20 pounds in the freshman fall. Um, um, so I started to throw a little bit harder. Uh, I still didn't, I still wasn't very good freshman year. Um, I put up some pretty bad numbers, but, um, you know, just kind of like developing through, through college. Like we have a really good developmental system here at Wake, um, through the lab and, and I've had two sets of pitching coaches. So I've had a bunch of different eyes on me and then, you know, just a lot of trial and error. I, I think I just, you know, each year I, I figured one or two things out a little bit better. And then it kind of just added up to, to get where I am now. Do you think there's a benefit to, so usually what I would tell pitchers is you work on velo first because that'll get you looks. And then mm -hmm. you work on command and other, and other stuff secondarily you took, and some other pitchers have taken the opposite route too, where they start out as command guys and then add velo later. Do you think yeah. that gives you an advantage a little bit because you know how to pitch? Uh, I think it, it might've put me at a disadvantage early on. I mean, obviously trying to get recruited and stuff that was the biggest thing um blocking me but I think it put me an advantage in the long run because you know right when I did just put on um the weight and some strength and the velocity came I was already like a little bit it, I think it was an easier adjustment than for guys who um might not have pitched as much and then have like have the stuff but I think it's a little bit harder because like once you're in the game and you it, it doesn't matter like really what your stuff is at, at that point it's kind of like if you can't throw a strike like you're gonna have a tough day yeah, that's part of the definitely part of the game. Like you could throw as hard as yeah. you want, but if the ball's not, if you're not getting anyone to swing and the ball's yeah. not in the zone, yeah. you're kind of a bad day for sure. Yeah, without without a doubt. Um, so like, did, how much of it was the Wake pitching lab? Because I've heard a ton of things about it. Um, it's it's almost legendary in college baseball circles. So was it a, a was it more of a mechanics change? Did you add pitches? What what was the big jump in your in your career? You think? um yeah it was a little bit mechanical not I would say more so it was um it was like adding on the strength and then because all all my my stuff kind of just ticked up the shapes just got better once you just throw it harder um pretty much right away but also I didn't really have a slider in high school at all so figuring that one out kind of uh kind of helped a lot a lot I didn't really have one my freshman year either so that was something I had to credit the the lab and then just trial and error like we you can go in the lab with like the edutronic cameras and then all, all like marker it up and everything and then just search for one ideal pitch shape and then work backwards from like all right how did I move on that um what are the target numbers I'm looking for uh so that was kind of something that that I worked pretty hard at and and I can pretty much only credit the lab for that when you were looking at the target numbers, like what did you base that off of? Was it comp comparable pitchers? Was it something that you had in mind of the pitch shape? 
like what what made you uh pick the pick the slider shape that you picked yeah so it's kind of evolved my idea of what i've wanted for my slider shape uh, a couple of times so this off season um i was kind of chasing a little bit more sweep with it so i had like this ideal um range it's kind of based off from the previous so from the previous year i looked at all my um like my results for my sliders and my 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 shape would range a lot so i kind of just looked at what got the best results what shape got the best results and then i tried to just match that one and feel like so get to where i could do that every time um but then that kind of shifted throughout the year because when i was chasing more sweep it would be a little bit slower um and then i would look in the season i was like halfway through the year this year and I did the same thing. I look back throughout the season, see what results are my best. Um, and like the harder ones, no matter what the shape was, the um, if it was pure velocity, the velocity showed better results. So I kind of just started throwing it harder and then kind of rely more on that gyro shape to, to just, just straight down and not chase the sweep as much uh, now. So it's kind of evolved and it probably will keep evolving. But, um, you know, I kind of just look at what yielded the best results. Yeah, that, that it makes a lot of sense because – what happens is I think younger pitchers love the big movement. Like, and fans like big movements. They're like, oh my God, did you see how much that pitch moved? Movement doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be really good because for you, it has to fit within your overall arsenal, like, you know, shape yeah. with your change up and your fastball and something that looks the same, but goes a different direction. So it's just going to vary. Mm hundred -hmm. percent. Yeah. Um, what, do you think um so like what kind of strength and conditioning stuff do you think added the most to your velo um i i mean i never really worked out in high school that that much honestly uh so any anything probably would have helped um but you know i really took there's a there was like a couple core lifts that we like threw in weekly that never changed no matter what part of the year we're in and that was that's just like the the we have like a squat segment and and then I uh, trap bar deadlift. And so I think I kind of took bond of the trap bar deadlift pretty good. Um, so when I went home over that, that freshman break, uh, I kind of killed that pretty hard. And, and I think that shows a lot of correlation uh, in some, in some force production. And I think that helped out a lot. Uh, trap bar is basically, did you, did you like it because you can lift more on the trap bar or because it was less, uh, it put less strain on your back and stuff? It's yeah, definitely both, but we they don't even let us do straight bar deadlift really. So we'll do some RDLs, but they don't they don't mess around, and we kind of just go in there. It's a little bit safer. Yeah, and and that is a big jump. I try to tell developing pitchers that probably the biggest jump you're going to get isn't a mechanics thing. Like everybody wants that quick fix. It's going to be like, mm -hmm. oh, if I just do this, it's going to make my velo jump. But it's really about strength and conditioning, packing on good weight, and you're yeah. a proof of that. Mm -hmm. No doubt. What's your best bolt right now? Like, what, what's your fastest you throw? I've I've flirted you with brag a little bit. A couple, I've flirted with ninety seven a couple of times, but you know, those just come randomly. I think I think the hardest pitch I've ever thrown was, um, like my hundred seventh pitch against Clemson last year in the eighth inning is like ninety seven. So I've 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 touched it once or twice, but do you? Where do you think your velo ceiling is? Do you feel like you're constantly like? Number one, how important is that to your game right now? And number two, where do you think you could end up at? Like, what's your development? Where do you feel that that it's going to to peak at? Yeah, um, I'm not like in the moment, like during the season. Obviously, I'm not like chasing a, a specific velocity number, but um, and it's not like very crucial to my game. I feel like I can get outs no matter where my velocity is out at that day, just because I my splits are are pretty equal, and I just um, change eye levels a lot. But, you know, each year I've been here and mostly of my career, or like my pitching career, I've had some sort of like velocity boost just naturally without um, and like obviously my going into my freshman year, that was the biggest one by far. But, you know, um, last year, my ranges were a little bit wider. My average was a little bit down compared to this year. So even if I didn't get that max um, velocity increase, I, my, my average has gone up like from a, a pretty good, pretty good margin. So I think. I think you just keep can keep seeing that, and realistically, I'll probably pitch at a little bit heavier weight um, after after I get out of college. So, I, I think I'll add on a few more pounds, and then I think we'll probably see that natural progression of velocity. But I don't think it's something that's super necessary for me to be able to compete at the next level. Yeah, it's one of those things that's that 
you read, you know, I was just reading some profiles of you for the draft and stuff. Cause obviously mm-hmm. that's going to be a big deal. And you're going to be one of the top pitchers in the draft. And that's the one thing they're like, well, we don't know what his ceiling is, but to me, there's so much more to your game than velo that mm-hmm. you know, your floor is so high and you're going to naturally gain a, you know, a tick yeah. or two and a tick or two with your stuff is going to play at pretty much any level. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, it's, that's, that's kind of what I run through my head. And also I have two different fastball shapes. So uh, I kind of just change speeds all the time, no matter, no matter what pitch it is. Uh, I think, I think any one or two mile an hour will, will do a little bit, but you know, I don't think I absolutely need it. Is there a pitcher that you model your game after? I don't know. That's a, that's a, that's a tough question. Obviously I get the Clevenger comp a lot, but that's more uh, of the would, look stuff, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> just that I know, but um, there's not one, anyone specifically. There's a couple of things that I, might, I like from, from guys, but you know, I kind of just try to run, run my own way and then take in a lot of information that I learned like through our lab and through all the, the research that we found and, you know, um, just kind of do my own thing. Yeah. So a weird comp to me came, it came to me this morning of maybe like even a, a Zach Gallon type guy who, you know, how to pitch. I had to throw in a North Carolina thing. Uh, <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, but you know, it doesn't, he, he doesn't throw a hundred. He throws mm-hmm. decently hard. You know, he's basically the same thing, like topping 97 type of guy, mm-hmm. uh, but knows how to pitch and he can use all his pitches and is a student of the game. Um, and that's kind of where I see you at least, I bucketize you in that type of mentality. Your best pitch, I mean, he's got a pretty darn good changeup too. Your best pitch yeah. is probably your changeup, I would think, right? Yeah, I would say so. Is that a good, is that a fairly good, do you ever watch Gallon pitch? I've watched him uh, a little bit and I've heard that comp as well. I've heard that. I've heard. All right, someone else said it, not just me. Good. Yes. I've heard that. I've heard uh, Aaron Nola. Um, I've heard a couple of things. So yeah, you, I think you're on the right track. Okay, good. Nola is actually a really good comp as well. Another yeah. guy with, uh, you know, again, I think your 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 changeup is, it's unique because it's a tough pitch for a lot of younger pitchers to to get. It's usually the last thing that people add, right? Like they're velo guys and maybe some big type of a hammer curveball or or a sweeping slider, but the changeup is is really a I mean, Scherzer called it the mid range jumper of pitches. Like you have to have feel for it. But you have yeah. an incredibly advanced feel. Was that always your pitch? Yeah, I kind of got lucky with that one. I've thrown it the same way my entire life. Um, so I never changed the grip. I've never really changed the feel for it. And I've just, and once you, you know, I've got so many reps with it. I was lucky. I, I mean, my freshman year, I threw like 55% changeup. So I, I got a pretty good feel. <laughs> I didn't know how to do that. That was the only way I could get hitters out. out. Did was that one of the things that the that the pitching lab told you was like how does it rate metrically as far as your your stuff is that also off the charts metrically? What my changeup, yeah. uh, the stuff. Yeah, just not not so, looking at the stats, but looking at at looking at the numbers on like uh, TrackMan or Rapsoda or whatever. Does yeah, it, the movement profile is, is pretty. It's pretty advanced, um, but I don't think that's what makes it good. Changeups are unique in college. Like you don't see a ton of them. And honestly, sliders probably perform better than changeups in college. Um, just, I don't, I don't know specifically why, but you don't see a ton of good changeups at, at this level. So like a, a uni- like a outlier uh, metric or movement profile really stands out. And yeah, mine's, mine's pretty good. And it's, it's got to do a lot just like um, with the velocity, you know, I, I throw it pretty hard and then, and then I kill a lot of, I have a different, like kind of a unique or change up because it's like pretty efficient. Like, so it doesn't, it, you'll hear a lot of like the seam shifted change ups now that kill the, kill the vert on almost like splitter ish, but mine's pretty, I just can get to the side of the ball pretty easily and then just kill the vert on it. So you're one of those guys, are you, you're kind of a natural pronator type guy? hundred percent. Yeah. It took me forever to fit, figure out any type of supination for a slider. It's very funny. And I've mentioned this, I've, I've gotten into this with some other guys too. Almost all the time, somebody that's good at one, isn't good at the other. There's very rare guys like a Max Scherzer who can really do both, yeah. but it's yeah. Hard. It's yeah. hard to figure out. But you're for a guy who doesn't naturally supinate well, your slider, like I've seen it. It's, it's a really solid pitch. Yeah. And it's honestly something that like right now in the past few weeks, it's, it's at the best it's ever been. And it's, I'm super comfortable with it. And like, 
you could argue it's better than my changeup right now. Um, but it's just something like I knew once I got the feel for it and I got reps underneath my belt that I was going to have no problem with in the future. It's just I needed to find one that was that I was comfortable with and, and get enough reps with it. Are there any other pitches you're looking to add in the future? Is there something that you say there's a hole or to, to help my development at the next level, I think I I should do X? I'm not looking to specifically add a pitch. You know, I'm, I used to mess around with a curveball, but I have such a hard time. Like when you said with supination, I can, it just turns into like a, a sweeper, a slower sweeper. So um, I, I think I'm just, I'm good with the two fastball shapes, change up slider for now, but you know, you never know in the future um, what I might need to the next level. What do you think separates you from other guys? Cause there's a lot of guys that work really hard. There's a lot of smart guys in college. There's, is it athleticism? Is it your approach? Is it your desire to keep learning? What type of things do you think separate you? At this level, honestly, I think a lot of it is like with experience. I don't know. There's not a ton of guys that have near 300 college innings under their belt. Um, so I think that has a lot to do with it. I've faced a lot of stuff. I've dealt with a lot of like really bad things <laughs> at, at this <laughs> level. But, you know, I've also had a lot of highs. So uh, I think just the experience is one of the things that give me kind of like that little edge against a lot of guys at this level. What do you, so that's a great point. And I think the ability, obviously as a pro, the ability to have been through a lot of things and have recall and say, ah, when I went through this at wake, this is how I overcame this. You're gonna have, you're gonna struggle. Everybody struggles. Yeah. Um, like how big is the mental game into what you do? Uh, it's super important. Um, it's, it's, the main reason why a lot of younger guys struggle, I know I went through it uh, freshman year. I was just wondering why my stuff would be the same from week to week, but the results would be drastically different. And I would get hit around one week and then throw it really well the next. Um, and you kind of have to have a short memory in this game. That's what I tell a lot of uh, a lot of our guys, like our younger guys. Like I talked about it with Josh Harrell last year. He was a freshman for us last year. He's awesome now, but um, you just have to have a short memory and then kind of just forget the bad and, and uh, live with the good for a little bit, but then you can't let it overwhelm you. So it's a, it's a ton. It's a mental game for sure. What are the tricks that you use to do that? Are there any like cues you give? Did any books that you've read that helped you? Like I've, I always recommend like the mental game of baseball by Dorfman or something like that. But was there something that jumped out at you that made you, that made it click for you? You know, I've, I've read like parts of some books, uh, our coach, our pitching coach now, Corey Miscar is pretty, he's big on, on all those books and then the breathing techniques and everything. So I buy in, I dabble a little bit with all the sorts that he brings, but nothing super. Um, I don't dive in super deep on one of, one of the elements, but you know, um, I kind of just, it, it's just something I've learned throughout just playing, like can't get too high, can't get too low. And, and then I always have a bunch of different outlets to rely on. Um, if I, if I am getting to towards one extreme, what would be the big thing? So calming yourself down in a situation, like, is it, what type of breathing stuff or is it a mental cue that you use to kind of reset? Yeah, it's kind of just like a lot of self-talk from, from myself personally. So not getting too hard on myself, but also not, um, like I said, not getting too high, but you want to keep it pretty positive, um, out there on the mound because there's a lot of stress going on and, I feel like just the less you have going on up there, the probably better off you're going to be. So you don't talk crap to yourself. You're mostly a positive guy. Then. No, I try to be pretty positive. I don't, I don't, I don't get in. I know some guys like to be a little bit negative and they pull it out of themselves, but I never found that to work. Well, who's the goofiest guy on your team? I mean, you guys have a good camaraderie. Like if you're a number one team in baseball, pretty darn good. Yeah. We have a bunch of characters. It's hard to, we have everything you can imagine pretty much. Um, Teddy McGraw is pretty funny. He's a, he's pretty goofy. Um, he went down for the year, but you know, he, he's, he's going to have a bright future, but he is one that keeps it light for sure. keeps it light in the dugout. How important is that for a team? Because um, it, it seems like the more successful teams have an attitude or a playing personality where you help each other out. If you had a bad outing or somebody else has a bad outing to, to let them know it's okay. And the reset versus everybody in it for themselves and you gripe in at somebody like oh, it's super important. It's like, I, it's like one of the biggest things I credit to our success to is how much fun we actually have. So everyone loves coming to come to the field um, and games are so fun now. So it's like everyone keeps it light and then it helps a lot when you're actually struggling, just knowing that um, 
no one's gonna no one's gonna blame you and everyone we've we've all been through it we know how hard this game is so and just we just have fun with it now yeah because i think that that gets underrated because everybody looks at pitch everybody looks at players like they're just numbers but to Mm -hmm. me it's like if you're in a job and everybody around you is a jerk you don't work as good as you can if you're on a team and everybody around you is supporting you it makes it a lot easier to to play at your best oh 100 it's it's honestly teammates are, are some of the b- biggest thing for development as well like it, they help with you know obviously stats and they pull pull it out of each other but you know just having some of the best um the best pitchers in the country around you just make you work that much harder throughout the week um you see what they they're doing and then you're like okay maybe i need to do a little bit extra so that we're constantly pushing each other and that competitive nature that just like drives pulls the best out of everyone do you feel a desire to be a role model for both teammates and you know players out there that are trying to come up you know young guys like when they come to the field and watch you get it giving mm-hmm. autographs yeah. and stuff yeah there's definitely their fair share of autographs more so this year than in past years um but you know uh, yeah, it's super important. I feel like a lot of our guys realize that. Like, we'll have people um, come by and watch all the time, and and we always uh, we always try and make sure that we're setting like a good example and and doing the right thing because you never know who's watching. And then whether it's a guy on your own team, like you could have freshmen trying to watch you and and trying to understand what they need to do um, in the future. I know that's what I did my freshman year. I had Ryan Cusick. I was I watched him pretty much his every move. So I I know there's guys probably doing the same same for me. So I just have to, you know, keep that in the back of my mind. It's funny. I met Kusick and his whole family at the all-star game a couple of years ago during the, mm-hmm. during the draft. He's a good dude. He's a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. Through freaking flames as well. Yeah. He did. <laughs> like, geez. It's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, do you have a baseball round? Yeah. I got a baseball here. Cool. Let's go over some pitch grips. All right. So pretty standard for the four scene. Uh, just thumb right underneath that. So I know some guys like to tuck or whatever. I never really felt comfortable with that. I kind of like to keep my thumb right um, under the middle on a lot of my pitches, you'll see. And then I get a two seam, kind of pretty standard two thumb on the lace. I like to have it directly underneath. No lace or not touching any of the seams. Um, funny consider, one about that. Oh, do you consider it more of a, a two seamer than a than a sinker? So you're trying to just get run. No, it's a it's a it's a sinker. It, it has more sync to it, but I just call it a two seam. I don't know why, okay. but um, <laughs> you can call it whatever you want. Yeah. Like every, we always get into this debate: is it a two seam or a sinker? Honestly, they're both pretty much the same grip, but it just depends how they. Yeah, start. it's the same thing. I I I just use them interchangeable, pretty much. Um, but I actually changed this one mid game at Louisville this year. I was I was kind of on the seams for a while because I had way better control over it. Um, but the movement was just not there at all on it. So I kind of, I kind of mid game switched it in, on the, in between the scenes. You change it in the middle of a game without even trying it out. Yeah. I mean, I've messed around with it and catch every now and then, but I never threw it where I went to. And I was kind of like in that rhythm where I, I, I don't know. I was just like, <laughs> all right, I'm going to try this. And it, it was nasty. So I was like, okay, we're not ever going back. Well, how much, how much run do you get on this? Um, I think I average around 20 inches. I, you know, I've seen, I've seen some HPs of 24-ish, but I, I kind of look more more towards the the sink on that. So um, I'm not I, – I've never had a problem. I, I run my four seam. My four seam will have carry and run. So I've never had a problem getting um, horizontal break. Yeah, that's that's going to be huge at the next level as well. Yeah. So – but um, – and then next I'll go to – my changeup's kind of unique. It's like – it's kind of like that. I got the thumb right underneath too. But I'm all fingers. I'm just over the two seam, uh-huh. not, not along it, which is a little weird. I don't know why I picked that up, but I did. I threw. I've thrown like this since like middle school. Thumb underneath like that. It's super weird. Are you pronating it too, or? I uh, I don't I don't try to. I do it naturally. So I just kind of I really just have to throw it. Throw it with my middle finger. My middle finger stays on the ball. It's the last finger to touch the ball. Um. So I just throw in my middle finger right down the middle. Is that one of those things that you would, if if you were trying to teach a younger pitcher, would you say, "Hey, dude, work on this change up because it's going to carry you somewhere"? Or, you know, what would you? That's, it's a change up, like what you were saying earlier. It's a super hard pitch uh, to teach, and it all it, it's all going to like an ideal change up is going to look different for everyone depending on like how they throw, the shape of their fastball, 
So you get a guy extremely over the top, it's gonna they're gonna have a really hard time trying to get a near zero um, induced vertical break on their changeup. So you might get that front to back changeup like an Ian Anderson type. And I wouldn't I wouldn't try and teach someone my grip if they have a hard time pronating naturally because I think they'll just cut this one pretty bad. Um, so it's 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 really like if you're helping someone with the changeup, you really have to know a lot about like their arsenal and the way they throw. Would you use that as like the anchor pitch to build other things off of? Like you're viewing your, hey, I've got this changeup that I know is a plus plus pitch. If I'm going to add mm -hmm. something, I want something that works well with my changeup as a, as as opposed to like using a fastball as an as a kind of an anchor type pitch. Yeah, I think it's been like the anchor for me in just the development of my pitches. I know I was working on um, more of the four seam this off season, but I didn't. I was getting into where the metrics would be really good and and uh, something I would really shoot for, but it would mess with my changeup. And I was like, all right, I'm actually not going to do that. Um, so there's some cues that there's some other cues that I can go to better the four seam that won't mess with the changeup. Yeah, because I mean it's a really good point because you want your pitches. I, I changeups are tough because like metrics don't necessarily matter as much as how it works with everything else that you have. And, you know, you can have great metrics and, and either either hitters will pick up on it because your mechanics change because it doesn't work mm -hmm. well with the rest of your arsenal, whatever. Um, and it's just another like pitching cue that I would give folks is don't don't live or die necessarily with the numbers that you get because the numbers could lie to you. Yeah, especially with the change up to like the metrics, you can have really bad metrics to the eye, like if you're just looking at track man, but then get great results out of it. So. You know, it's one of those weird things. And you can also have one that's just metrically really good, but then just doesn't perform well just based off your other stuff. So, yeah, it's one of those you can't live or die by the track man numbers. You seem really comfortable with the numbers, though, like at least in your mind. Is that something that intrigues you about pitching is like digging in deep to all the analytics behind it and learning a lot about yourself? Um, or is it just like, you know, there are a lot of pitchers that like to be told what to do and there are a lot, and then there's a lot that want to learn. And you seem like one of those guys that constantly wants to learn. Yeah. You know, that was, I think that was a big part of my development is coming in with no knowledge of any of the, the ball flight data at all. And then I feel really comfortable talking about it now and I understand all the, and I think that's what you can credit wake for. We have a great analytics team and helping me learn all that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think I'm, what the relationship I have with my coaches and staff here now, it's more of a collaborative approach to it. So they, they're really good at bringing, bringing the data to me and then we can, we kind of interpret it together. So uh, I'm it, pretty comfortable with it. Same thing with like heat maps and stuff for hitters. Are you constantly? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'll do, I'll do my own scouting reports. Um, we have access to a couple of different platforms that like you know, obviously at the heat maps and video and then just show zones and, and different counts that hitters are good in. Um, and then I'll just compare what I have. Um, with my coach and he does he does in-depth scouting reports pretty um so I kind of just compare that with what what he had and they usually match up pretty well are you a pitch to your strengths guy or pitch to hitters weakness guy I pitch to hitters weakness pretty much all the time unless I'm just absolutely cruising and um sometimes you're just up there and you know what pitch you're going to throw no matter who is in the box but you know most of the time I'm kind of I have pretty I'm pretty comfortable my splits are pretty pretty even where I, I feel comfortable throwing whatever, whenever. So I kind of just attack their weakness. I like that. I mean, it's, uh, you know, everybody's got their different thing. There's, a, there's guys who only pitch to their strengths, but yeah. I think uh, it's kind of, do you read swings too? Are you pretty good at that? Yeah, I read swings a lot. Um, you know, it's kind of, it's evolved in my career, like in the beginning, my freshman year and then a little bit last year, I was definitely pitched to my strengths um, because I, I personally didn't think I had like the ability to, execute all four of the pitches to be able to strongly say I pitched a hitter's weakness. But now I feel like my execution's at a point where I, I'm like I'm comfortable enough throwing any pitch at any count and, and strictly attacking what they're not as good at. Well the fact let, let we move on to the slider. Um but the fact that you consider your slider potentially at times your best pitch too is a really good sign that it doesn't matter to you. Like you're able to throw all of them. You take pride in all your pitches and can mix it up. Um, that's, you know, that's awesome because you keep questions in hitters heads. Yeah. Yeah. I'll show you the grip now before we talk to talk yeah. about it. It's a little bit weird. It's one that I, it's like almost Wait a, spike. a second. Yeah. I like that. I, I lay it on top because I never felt comfortable with the, the full spike and it just didn't feel right in my hands, but I like the, 
I like the amount of pressure that was on the middle finger and everything. So I kind of just lay it on top. It, it's like, it just feels good for me. Did it's, someone it's show really you that cool. or did you just discover no, that? I've never, I just was holding it. I, Cause I wanted more pressure on my middle finger without spiking it. And I was like, all right, what do I do with this finger now? And then I just put it on top. So let's look at that again. Is it, is your finger torqued at all? It looks a little bit torqued maybe. Or no, I twist around like, so yeah. this is my middle finger. It's like a lot of pressure. I kind of twist it around and then I just laid that on top. And you're using the seam. Okay. So you're, you're kind of bracing right it against yeah, the so seam. What I do, I'll, I'll place, I'll like just place it right in the middle and then I'll just wrap. Interesting. Yeah. That's a kind of a unique grip and you're, and it's a pure, it's, it's basically a pure gyro. Yeah, it's pretty much, it's got a, there's sometimes it has a little bit of a sweep and not crazy. Uh, it's, it's pretty gyro now yeah. starting like five weeks ago. It's <laughs> really recent. Is yeah. it, how does that play with your, when you envision it, are you envisioning, envision, envisioning, did I just say that? Envisioning, <laughs> envisioning, whatever. Are you looking at a tunnel in your head? Are you trying to figure out like, hey, if I throw these pitches all in the same spot, they're going to go different directions. Or do you even bother thinking about that? Is that something that goes into your your process? I don't think about about it too much. I kind of know the ideal um, pitch plan for each one of mine and and my heat maps uh for for my pitches are, are pretty good so i kind of just trying to execute to like a specific spot pretty much every time um and I, honestly that the shape of my slider the reason it's there now is because yeah it does get it does get the most swing and miss but also it's if you look at the heat maps from the past like five or six weeks weeks with those they're they're a lot tighter than um what they were before so it's a, it's a lot smaller margin of error so you're already you're constantly even getting better during the season is what you're feeling like yeah, I I mean, I guess so. I, I I'm always just trying to look at look at stuff why why I did good, why I did bad. So that's one of the things I picked up on. Um, I noticed like halfway through the year, um, my shape to lefties was a little bit more gyroy than gym righties because probably I didn't want to sweep it into a lefty. And then I was like, also I'm performing better against lefties with the slider, so I kind of just turned it into my primary shape. Do you sometimes feel bad that you don't even have any bad to work off of and improve because like you, you don't lose games. You don't do, like, I don't, I'm speaking it into existence that, that for the rest of the season, you're going to constantly be winning games. I'm not jinxing you. <laughs> no, I don't feel bad about it at all really, <laughs> but um, you know, there's always stuff you can get better at um, in this game and you can uh, watch back the film on pretty much all the games. So you can kind of find something that you're never perfect at. And uh, it's not something that you like, freak out about obviously but it's something maybe you'll show some focus to throughout the week are there hitters that you dream facing at kind of the next level is there anybody that you're sitting there going man i made it if i face blah 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 i actually haven't thought about that but i guess that it that will that will set in when i'm when i'm just facing like a mic trout or something and uh that'll be that'll i don't know i made it then yeah, because I mean, you can't say you made it if you made pitching ninja because you've already made pitching ninja. Like that's <laughs> that's old hat. True. So I, I uh, hear that you're like an artist and stuff as well. I try, I try, not as much as I used to be, but I I I, I dabble. Well, you know, I mean, if you draw a banner for my Twitter account, I'll put it there at least for a little bit. If it's good, I will. Uh... You know, I've had a lot of requests lately for some art, and I'm just not finding enough time to to sit down and do it but really you don't think back. you have enough time to do it because you <laughs> i know that's what people don't people don't believe me but i'm i'm scrapped for time nowadays yeah go figure what was your what what'd you major in economics i was an economics major back in the day what like so you basically just want to manage your vast wealth that you're going to have in just a little bit <laughs> i guess i don't know i kind of more interested in um in like the statistics side, I should have majored in statistics probably, but there's like a couple of courses, econometrics and stuff. I kind of, I liked a lot. Yeah. Cause like economics has a ton of stats in it. Like it's one, I mean, you're basically comfortable with, with numbers and plotting stuff and all that. Plus it's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it, it, it's a good major to have. I like, I mean, it, it, economics is important. It's good. Yeah, no, it's good. I'm, I'm glad I did it. You're more of a math guy. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Is there, what's the best thing about, so heading into the college world series, what is the, the best thing about college baseball? Like, what did you get out of it? Um, you know, what are, 
say you were say you were drafted out of high school, but you had an ability to go to college. Like what what do you think people get out of that experience? Well, for me, my favorite thing about about college baseball is just all the people I've met now through like summer ball and then just playing in this league, like uh, and then Team USA, like going this past week to um, to Durham for the ACC tournament. And then you just know guys like that you'll be friends with for the rest of your life and then that you'll be playing against for a while. And then you can just sit there and watch the watch the game together that you more than likely wouldn't have those connections with these top guys. Uh, if you just went straight straight to pro ball. So I think and then like knowing that whatever organization that I, I might go to, I'll probably have someone that I know um, with me or near me uh, is something that I'm super grateful with either past teammates or guys that I've I've known just through the league. It's pretty cool. Did you grow up a, a baseball fan? And if so, what team? I did. I used to I don't know how. So like North Carolina, you can kind of choose whatever team. I think that's the rule. Is you can just choose whatever team it you is. want. Yep. Um, so I was a Red Sox fan growing up. Um, David Ortiz, Dustin Pedroia, all those guys. Awesome. That's kind yep. of all right. So that's a more interesting, like a lot of North Carolina guys, Atlanta is the big team yeah, because they get to the Braves. That was a little bit of an outlier. Yeah. Because I mean, like I'm I live in Atlanta, so we uh we definitely get a lot of Braves around here. But the Red Sox, <laughs> that's a good choice. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why, but I kind of, I kind of was like a Boston sports fan growing up, except for the Patriots, because we actually had a, a football team. So, I, I kind of like the Celtics for some reason. I guess probably because the Bobcats were really bad at the time. <laughs> yeah, that I mean that kind of makes sense. But it's one of those things yeah. like once you pick a team, you kind of stick with it. Is there a pitcher that you liked on the on the Red Sox? I mean, Beckett, Josh Beckett. I liked oh, interesting lot. pick. Yep. Yeah. Um, but I, I was I never th- knew I was a pitcher back then. So or when I was like eight, I was I was um I was a, a hitter and I, I liked like I thought I was a catcher. Jason Veritek I, I liked a lot. Um but you know, but yeah, Josh Beckett was definitely my pick. Interesting. So you're did you when did you stop being a hitter? Like when were you a full time PO? Um, I played for my high school team. I hit all the way through just because we were like a small high school, but like travel ball, I stopped when I was 15. Yeah. Um, and, and you played, like, and you, you, you play, do you ever wish that you were able to hit off yourself? Or you ever wish you were able to hit in college? Not anymore. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe earlier in my career, like in high school, I might, that would have been pretty cool, but no, I don't want to face myself anymore. How would you strike yourself out? Probably anything, but um, <laughs> I knew I, w- I can't hit a fastball anymore. I've never really seen like north of 91. Um, so I don't think I would hit a fastball, honestly. Did So you did the whole travel ball circuit too. I think I saw that on your, on your uh, mm-hmm. perfect game stuff. And you've been down to the Lake Point and all that. Like, yeah. what was your first experience? Like going to Lake Point to me was a big deal for the teams I coached. Um and just watching kids like they step out and it's like this baseball Mecca almost that in East Cobb is kind of similar. Yeah. I mean, that, it was super cool. Uh, I think my first time there was like perfect game junior national and then showing up. And I think like blaze Jordan was on my team and, and some, some other big name guys. And I was just like, obviously at that time, like I said earlier, it was like a no one. Um, so it was pretty, it was pretty cool just seeing all those guys and being on the same field as them. And, like at those facilities with coaches just walking around. It was awesome. Did that make you want to take your game to the next level or did it, it, you have a natural drive in you? Like, you know, seeing some of these guys, you could sit there and go, man, I'm never going to be as good as this dude. Or, or you challenge yourself going like, if I'm going to make it to the next level, I better work my butt off and be one of these dudes. Like Mm -hmm. what was, what was your thought process of playing so I had a couple different ones. Like at that time, like when I wasn't getting recruited, but I was still getting, I was playing against these guys and getting a lot of outs and everything. I was like, how am I not getting recruited? But then once I finally did get uh, recruited, I like kind of had to look in the mirror. I was like, okay, I'm kind of lucky I got recruited. And if I ever want to play, I got to work a little bit harder because I'm I'm still some a step or two behind these guys. Um, so it wasn't until like after, after I was already going to wake, I, I realized like if I wanted to actually play and like right away, I needed to, do some work. Was that your own realization or coaches saying that, Hey, you got to work on this. No one ever told me that. Um, that was, that was kind of all me. I like that because one of the hardest things for people to do people in general to do 
is an accurate self-evaluation. And if you can't do that, if you don't know what you're not good at, you're never going to get better. And you have to know the path to kind of get there too. Yeah. I mean, it's tough to, especially at that age for me, I think it was tough to, to tell myself that I wasn't quite as good as some of these guys, but it's probably what had to be done. Yeah. And now everybody's looking at you going, I'm not quite as good as this guy, but <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, you know, stat at the end, at the end of the day, things don't lie. Like people have voted you twice, a, you know, one of the best conferences yeah. in, 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 a, in the U S in entire college baseball. And you're twice ACC pitcher of the year. And Lord knows this <laughs> year was ridiculous. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No, that's pretty cool. What could have gone better for you this year? Like, I, I, I know what can go better for you now. Like, winning a national yeah. champ what would that mean to you to win a national championship to be on the bump oh, that, that's a dream come true um especially where we've come from as like a program we got a lot of the same guys that were here two years ago and we were we were at like the bottom of the acc in my freshman year so just to see where we've come from and then i mean that would just there'd be nothing better than than to, to pitch in omaha and bring back one of the wins in salem Especially for like for the ACC in general too, because yeah. you got to teach the SEC a lesson, right? Yeah, we got to show them we can play a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and it, so is Wake now a baseball school? I don't know. We we just won the women's golf national championship, so we might be a women's golf school for a little bit until we until we win the college world series. Then I think we'll we'll have to share it. I mean, it's always traditionally golf has been a really good sport for. Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, we've actually the wake sports have been on the rise. I feel like for the for the past couple of years, we've been pretty competitive in in a lot of our sports and soccer, pretty good. But you know, I think we might have put together one of the better regular seasons in wake athletics history. So we might have to hold a title for a little bit. Yeah, that would be sick. Like, so what it what do you think makes wake a special place? Like, if I'm if you're trying to sell the school to somebody. The fact that you guys have come from where you came from and are now arguably the best team in college baseball, number one, mm -hmm. congrats on that. But number two, how big of a part do you feel like the players are, the coaches are, what is the key to this? Yeah. If, well, if I'm trying to sell someone on, on Wake Forest, like we're obviously a super small private school, um, but the facilities and the, the funding to the athletics and the support that all athletics get is unmatched. It's like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know we have 5,000 kids just coming to look at through our facilities and like our um, just, it's, it's crazy, but you know, we, we have lucky to have a really great coach and staff and, and the players, we kind of all bought in um, in the past two years, I would say the standards kind of been set for, for what a Wake Forest baseball player looks like. And, you know, I think, I think that's got a lot to do with, the coaching staff and and who we've brought in so it's uh it's a fun time to be a d yeah i mean it's like almost you're turning into like pitcher you and you may be the you know one of the poster children for that change like you know you have vandy being known is that right like you know you guys yeah. are right there yeah i know we definitely especially this year i feel like we've put a good uh resume up but you know we i think just the information we have is it's almost unmatched we have so much so much data and, and and just so many smart people um working either through the lab or on the staff it's just it's unmatched is that something that that you would tell like a pitcher that was hungry for information that constantly wanted to learn they're probably not going to find a better place than than wake for that oh for sure i like i would say 100 percent um with full conviction like if i was talking to a high school kid i was like if you want to recheck your maximum potential i would get awake Really, that no doubt in my mind. I wouldn't be. I have no, no sort of lying behind it at all. <laughs> nice. Um, is there anything else you want to add? Is there? Um, and I, I miss something. I, I we've covered a lot. I've I've had fun. Good. Well, I have fun watching you pitch, man. You are electric on the mound. You. You're one of those guys that you can just tell. There's some guys that just throw. You're a complete mm -hmm. pitcher. And it's Thank fun you. to watch. And I and whenever I, I put you out on the, on my Twitter account or whatever, that's always the, the compliments you get are I love watching this guy pitch because you seem to know what you're doing and you you attack hitters in an in an intelligent way versus just chucking. Thank you. Yeah, that means a lot. That's what I'm trying to do out there. So I'm glad I'm glad people uh, see it.
Well, you are you headed to uh, Seattle later in the summer for the for the draft? I don't know if I'm going to make it to Seattle or not. It's kind of far. It's like it's a far <laughs> trip, but um, we'll see. You never know. Yeah, I'll be up there if you uh, maybe we'll bump into each other. If you end up coming there, let me know. All right, we'll so catch up. I cool, will. man. Hey, great talking with you. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I had fun. <laughs>